Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to my channel Deb Chanel's 48's World where we do reviews. We're going to be reviewing um, Merit to Medicine that aired tonight on the Bravo channel. It was season 7 episode 12 and it was called Revenge of the Sip and Paint. Cabo St. Lucas, Mexico is where they were at and where we're going to pick up at uh, start talking about uh, the episode. It was t uh, it was definitely boring to towards the end where uh, Damien, Dr. Heavenly's husband, started getting women twerking on him. <laughs> and he was having a fun time, but he was trying to make sure the cameras caught his hands up in the air. It wasn't on a woman. The women were attacking him. And that's pretty much where it was. He didn't want no issues with his wife, Dr. Heavenly. Because Dr. Heavenly is definitely a over-the-top person. She's one of those people that do as I say, not as I do. I know how to control myself. But, Damien, I don't know about you. <laughs> but let's go on and get on into the scene. We got Quad. She's picking at Dr. Simone. Simone got on this, I don't know, weird kind of outfit. It's like over-the-top. But it fits her, and it was a cute little outfit. Uh, she was all in white. I think I have some pictures in my video slides where y'all will see that little uh, ensemble she called herself wearing. But, yeah, Dr. Hevelin was at that sipping paint with all them uh, brothers running around there butt naked. And, I mean, in their birthday suits, that's exactly what I mean, in their birthday suits. And then she's going to have a, a fit because Damien didn't get back to the little bungalow uh, to after two, telling him I was waiting for you and you didn't even get back and where y'all was, what y'all doing? I know y'all wasn't eating until no two o'clock in the morning. We been back. Da 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 da. Her mouth just running a mile a minute. I'm like, Lord have mercy. Why? Heavenly can't be like uh Mariah, okay? Because Damien is just like uh Aiden in a sense. But honey, yes, that woman was sitting on um. Daddy's lap is what she called him. Ooh, child. When she see that footage, she just going to have a fit. But, Heavenly, it seems like you're insecure about your relationship and your man. But, yet you trying to make everybody else believe everything is solid over there. So, I'm like, Dr. Heavenly, mm -mm -mm -mm. you need to stay in your own front yard and your own house while you run around here and trying to tell everybody else what to do, how to do, and where to do it. Giving out relationship advice. Girl, please. <laughs> You probably are uh, just as insecure as the rest of them are. I mean, you try to make like your uh, husband and y'all relationship is on point. But everybody has relationship problems, whether they're married or they're just in a relationship. Everybody has them. It has to take its place and work itself out day by day. But you're trying to act like you and Damien got it going on and that y'all have no flaws in y'all relationship and y'all don't have any insecurities about one another. But I think you do because you even so even so much as said you don't want nobody dropping this hot like on your daddy or your man. You don't want nobody ass up all in his face and tits everywhere and all this. And I'm like, girl, what you want him to do? Give you a play-by-play, -play, blow by blow or what he experienced with those women, girl? Please. Anyway, moving on. If you want to blame somebody, blame uh, Cecil. He took him there. <laughs> and it just seemed like all the women wanted to gravitate towards him. But I think it was just a, a play on words, a play on events because you were the hot trotty when that man was picking you up, turning you every way, uh, uh, except for sideways in the right way. And um, Damien didn't know anything about it because you sure didn't want to tell him. Remember that, Dr. Heavenly? Do you remember that? So, a turnabout, fair play. That's all it really was. That's why he got the lap dance, just like you got to paint the penises and look at the penises and the butts and the birthday suits of all the men. Okay. Yeah, I feel you. I say the same thing when you act up on stage or on your platform of the Merit to Medicine sitcom show. Yeah, it's a reality show, I should say. That that's what I feel every time throwing up my hands. Saying the same thing that you were just saying with all your antics for the crew as well as your husband. You want everybody else to toe the line, but you can have all types of infractions here and there and have excuses for them. But let's go on into the first scene. We got Quad. She's picking at Simone. 
in her swimsuit. She's trying to throw a little shade, but it's all in fun. Then we got uh, Simone giving out the, um, not contestants, but couples, uh, different questions that she wanted one of them to answer as a couple. Uh, she gave Dr. Hamlin and uh, Heavenly and uh, Damon the question about infidelity. Uh, and he does give a good answer. I can't remember it to save my life. <laughs> but however he spun it, it was like infidelity is not right and it should be worked out. But pretty much I think he was saying if the person wanted to leave, they could leave because that's a hard pill to swallow. But if you love that person, you wouldn't have even let it get to that type of situation. You should have worked it out. You should have communicated. You should have did everything possible prior to um, going past that borderline that you should have even really have had to cross. You shouldn't have had to cross that line. Uh, but yeah, he gave a good answer. Then the question went to David and Buffy. It was a question about spouse living in another city. Um, how would you pretty much, uh, operate in that arena if it happened to you all? And of course that pretty much, they were talking about, um, Contessa and Scott about the long distance relationship that they were having where she was off in school and he was at home with the kids and we all know unless you have one of them Superman type of daddies that the kids like to be around and the mama can go do whatever she got to do pretty much what Dr. Heavenly is pretty much because <laughs> we never see her two um, teenage boys on the show at least they don't show them that much where they're sitting actually talking on the show maybe a couple of times but not as much as we see a laura running around now trying to get her camera time okay but it seems like damien always are with the boys doing something and he keeps them off screen but uh yeah he gave a very very nice uh example and response uh he was saying well hey you got to make it work you got to come home on the weekend or when you have that free time you got to uh, make sure you're communicating uh, with them some form, uh, email, you calling them. You know, the communication lines have to be open or there's room for, you know, things that you really don't want to be a part of your relationship. Uh, pretty much like a lot of static, like James Brown saying, static, 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 don't be no static. Mm. Don't start none, won't be none, static. No, stand it, stand it. Yes, honey, yes, James Brown. But anyway, and then we got a question where Scott just blurts out, uh, what do you do when your wife yells in public at you? And everybody's sitting around like, Scott, what the hell are you talking about? That wasn't a question we were supposed to be discussing. <laughs> but I guess he was trying to say in a roundabout way that contessa be out there hollering at him in public and he don't know what to do and then it was a situation where simone was hollering at cecil some time ago maybe four or five seasons ago where i think uh shoot who was she getting into it all the time with i want to say it was toya and eugene they was fussing a lot and they was meeting each other at some skating rink or some outdoorsy type of event and Simone didn't like how Toya was acting and this and third and she was like cussing her out cussing uh Cesar out for bringing her into a situation like that and not standing up for her you know Simone is a little wild woman sometimes when she can't get her point across or she don't feel like nobody listening to her girl man she will pick up and get all her gear and leave honey but maybe she had anger management consultations here and there to have her work on that because she seems to be a lot more um what do you call it quiet her demeanor is a little bit more low-key and um a little solemn like she should be uh she's acting like not like you can push her buttons and she just go off on you like white on rice but it seems like she's gotten that much so under control so i'm glad to see that for her uh but it also uh, you know was a telltale sign that they wanted to show a replay that you know you, you do have couples that tend to go off on their couples in public and it's quite embarrassing you know so they were trying to work that through and uh they pretty much gave him some resources of how they would have dealt with it and you know it was a good turn of about 
Uh, but it was a great discussion how they were going about answering the questions until they got to contest the law, and that's another whole subject. I'm like, got to get her the voice because this woman ain't happy. She ain't happy. She ain't happy. I'm like, I don't know what's going to make her happy because she's getting on my nerves. I'm like, girl, where is the, where's the divorce papers? Because <laughs> it don't seem like you happy with nobody. You ain't even happy with yourself. And nothing I do or say is going to change anything. I'm like, all right, Scott, he was saying or letting us know, hey, she could have just paid, paid the extra money, stayed here in Atlanta, went a little longer to school, but you at least would have been here with the family because you know I ain't about that life. I, I ain't trying to upset my life. You know how I am when you marry me, but Contessa was doing all just, just too much. She was telling T that we ain't really need to know about. Everybody was trying to, like, try to figure out what she talking about, where she going with all this. And, honey, she just blew up and left the tape. But then Buff had to go, you know, calm her down, soothe her, and pretty much pump her up to go back and cuss God out. And I'm like, no, 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 girl, Buff is staying your lane, honey. Just tell her, go woo, 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 like uh, Sinclair used to do on um Living single, when people were arguing, she was trying to get them to calm down. She was like, woo, 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 woo. That's all Buffy needed to do. But she was trying to rile that woman back up and have her going back in the uh, fire zone and going to get burnt again. But anyway, moving from that situation, um, uh, Simone asked another quick fast and a hurry type of question like do you need your spouse's permission to go to school to open up a new business or practice and of course Dr. Hevelin you know that question is pretty much geared towards I think it was um Dr. who was it Damien Kimes because he was wanting to open up a new practice and then it was put at Contessa because Contessa wanted to go back to school uh, for occupational therapy or physical therapy, some type, some type of therapy, therapy, but she wanted to do it the cheaper way and she wanted to do it out of town. I'm like, mm, 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 mm. I would have said no, honey, do it in town, pay more money, go a little longer, but at least you at home and you don't have to have no guilt trip going here and there. But it is what it is, because if you couldn't afford to really go to school, that should have been a no go already then and there and you just had to defer your dream but it just is what it is uh then we got contest like i said she gets upset with the question uh she put scott on blast scott's turned around and put her butt back on blast then she just gets up from the table and leaves like she crying or something i'm like girl stop your try crying dry your tears tell that man what it's gonna be what it gonna be is okay and get on about your business i'm sick of you i'm sick of you doing all this you know back and forth trying to get people on your side trying to shut heavily down telling her to shut up that's just your husband damien damn he a good one but you know you got the last one in the universe and don't make no more men like him okay uh and it's almost like she was trying to call damien like he was him pet. he do everything uh, uh, heavily snaps her fingers for him to do, and that's it. Which I thought was no. He just been a loving husband, and he rather just put up with heaven because he can't. He just don't feel like being bothered with no other women. <laughs> he like I don't deal with her. She don't gave me three kids. Shit, I, I I'm gonna pick my poise in this day. I'm just gonna just side with her. That's pretty much how Damien go. He just flows with the wind. However, heavily say if it's blowing east, he's looking at it being blowing east. He don't try to make no waves in his relationship. But anyway, going to the second scene, we got Buffy. Like I said, she runs to go comfort uh, Contessa. Contessa leaves like she can't finish the conversation. She just got to run out, tell people behind the scenes what's really going on. Of course, you know everybody at like what Dr. Heavily is doing in the back of me. So I'm, you know. I'm talking about what the fuck? What is she doing? Why is she running? This, that, and the third. And everybody just tired of contest in a sense. They pretty much like, baby, stop whining. Either you go and enroll yourself back in school, do what you got to do, or you stay out of school. However you see it. But don't keep adding on to the plate that's already broken. Okay? Anyway. She goes on to tell Buffy, because Buffy is up there conferencing her. You know, Scott, let, let her go. <laughs> Just let her go. And nobody else wanted to run out of Buffy. I would have thought that Simone, since it was her event, her questions, why she didn't go. But anyway, it is what it is. Buffy went, and um, 
Contessa goes on to tell her that, you know, she didn't really want to leave the military. She left the military because of her husband. He got tired of traveling to, fro, and around the world, and then some. And, you know, they had left one place, and then they settled here in Atlanta. But it was only supposed to be for a short time. They was going to go somewhere else because she liked it. The uh, touring, uh, the different places, the different countries you get to visit while you're in the military. And that's the kind of uh, life she wanted to live. But, again, she did it for her husband and just that and the third. And Buffy said, you know, that's not right. He ain't doing nothing for you. I'm like, Buffy, you only in one side, baby. And he giving his side in the back of you. The other people are hearing it while you sitting up there hearing Contessa's situation. It's too much, too much, okay? Buff just needed to have comfort her, brought her back to the table, or took her to her room, and let it be a day's work. Oh, done, okay? Um, We got Dr. David. He's talking. He's giving an advice, and his solid advice he's giving. And I'm like, go ahead, Dr. David. Put your skills to work, brother, because they working. Um, Scott saying he don't want nobody to think that he's not supporting his wife to the group. And they're like, no, man, we, we know you're doing good. Even Damien said, hell, if you need to talk, come call me. Don't take it out on her or whatnot. We'll talk it out. And this thing, third, he's like, because I'm trying to be that far. But she, she ain't really trying to hear me or anything. And everybody's like trying to cover here. And the was saying, you know, you're a husband as well as you're a provider. You got to make it work. And then you're a doctor. Okay, so I, I don't know what to tell you, but you need to treat her. Treat her like a lady. Treat her like a lady. That's what you need to do to your wife, uh, Contessa. Treat her like a lady, honey. Probably put on some medication, too, for her little mood swings. I don't know, child. Just here with a deal. Then we leave that scene. We go to Buffy. They're getting ready for dinner or whatnot or trying to have that little time <clears throat> where they're settling down. And Buffy is shaving her man's hair on his back. I was like, Lord, have mercy. And she used the nair remover cream, so she really ain't shaving. And she just got to walk, uh, wipe it off and stuff. But I'm like, honey, that's love right there. That's love in my spirit. Love. Talking about love. Okay, must be love, baby. But in that way, we got Scott. He's uh, talking to his children on the phone, catching up with them, seeing what's the comments and goings and all of this stuff. And I'm like, okay, well, what is Cadelsa doing? Should she be doing that? Should she be mothering, trying to figure out where her key is at? But, you know, I'm only giving what I'm being seen and shown. So that's all in my expectations to get commentary on that. Maybe Contessa had called them prior to them taping this scene. I don't know. I know she was working out on that computer. I don't know if she was doing work. But she was just uh, typing away like a journal she was keeping on a Word document or something. I don't know. But she was just, ooh, child. She was typing, 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 typing herself away over there. Instead of in there talking to her man, making love, then talking back to her man again and making some more love. I don't know what's wrong with Contessa, okay? She can't get her way. She just shit shit down, all right? But anyway, um, we got Simone. She's getting ready for the uh, single ladies outing where she's going to be paying homage to Quad and building her up because she pretty much felt like she died Quad last season. She wasn't there for her when Quad was going through her divorce and, uh, you know, and, and Dr. Well, not Dr. Um, what's his name? Shoot. Cecil was saying, okay, that's a good idea. And yeah, you need to like spread the love on her. And she was asking him what you're going to do for the men. And he pretty much basically told him, yeah, we're going to the strip club. We're going to play. Pay y'all back for that sip and paint that y'all did. And we had to hear about it on social media and just that and the third. Yeah, we're going to go have fun, honey. And she was like, okay, uh, you know, be safe out there. Don't do something that you're going to regret. Okay, be like me and I do. So that was a good scene that she was supportive of her husband. And he was telling her what was going to happen. And, you know, it turned out pretty well in my eyes. Anyway, we go to another scene at Cecil's greeting David because, you know, David's on time all the time. You say uh, be there at 7 o'clock. Uh, Cecil say that, that means he there at 6.55. <laughs> I said, yes, honey, he ain't on color people time. He is not on CPT time. So you should have known, see, so you was the guest host. You should have been now at 655 when he was strolling on up, okay? And then other men, they surely came around 715, whatever. You know what I'm like. They was on CPT time, so they don't know nothing about being on time even when they're on vacation, okay? So um, they said they, oh, well, Cecil pretty much said he got to, like, work him out on that. Just because we say one time, just still come about 10. 
10, 10 or 15 minutes late past that time, okay? Because David is the Caucasian man right there, the British Caucasian man, I believe. When you say a particular time, they going to be there. Because that was how they was born and raised and bred, honey. You be on time. Even if you don't get to go nowhere, you still be on time. So, uh, moving on from there. That was a cute little scene. I had to laugh myself. Nobody told da uh, yeah, David about CPT time. But anyway, it is what it is. That was for his wife to uh, educate him on the black ways of doing things sometimes. Then we have um, Jackie and um, Buffy and the rest of the women there congregating at this little beach scene that uh, sorry, Simone had set up for the women, especially honoring Quad and stuff. She goes and talks to Heavenly about what she's planning on doing for uh, Quad and Dr. Heavenly thinks that's a brilliant idea. She couldn't have thought anything much uh, better to honor Quad at such a short moment, short time, and them being on vacation and all that. So she's like, okay, we can pull this off. We'll do this. And while the other women weren't there, and it was just Buffy and um, Dr. Jackie, Dr. Jackie really gave a sincere, honest, felt apology to um, Buffy, and Buffy was definitely well-receiving of that. And, of course, she was getting shady in her confessionals, but, you know, it is, it is what it is. It was better, much better than what Jackie had did on the last episode uh, of calling herself apologizing to Buffy. So that was a good scene. Then we got all the ladies there, you know, together. They're celebrating Quad. They tell her it's all about her. They're going to have a living singles night. And they're just going to play little cute games. Uh, one of the games was who would they like to sleep with, who would they like to marry, and who would they like to kill. I'm like, oh, God. Simone, really? Why y'all just couldn't have, like, a sit-down, eat-by-the-sea the type of situation? And just have uh, informal talking. You know, whatever anyone wanted to discuss. Anything was on somebody's mind or whatnot. They have that type of thing. But you always want to play games. <laughs> I was like, uh-uh. Then Dr. Heavenly going to talk about she would like to, uh, I think she said she would like to, I don't know what she said, she would like to sleep with Jesus or she wanted to marry Jesus. I couldn't remember, but it was just, she, she was doing too much. I didn't like what she had said at all. But uh, Jack was saying she would like to sleep with Will Smith and marry Barack Obama. And I forgot who she wanted to choke or kill or whatever, but... It's neither here nor there. It was a poor piss uh, game that they were playing that I didn't really care for. They could have left that out in taping. And then you had the men over there. They were calling themselves, eating, looked like they were eating octopus. I'm like, ew. I know it's a delicacy and it's an acquired taste, but ew. But anyway, and the women, I don't know what they were eating. It looked like some rice. It looked like some Mexican type stuff, food or tacos or uh, case it is. I, I don't know really what it was. Uh, and then Curtis, uh, not Curtis, uh, uh, what's the nice Caesar saying? He gonna have another treat for the guys and he takes them on this little ride in the van and I'm like, oh lord, here, I hope that van don't break down. But he has them right at a strip club. I'm like, oh lord, they gonna pay Dr. Heavenly back for showing out at that paint and sip and then she gonna try to make like ain't that happen. She didn't wanna tell what she, who she called her husband daddy about the incident. He was like, why you didn't tell me about it? She was like, well, because we had sex and then you know how you get, you be tired, you be ready to go to sleep. So I'm like, well, Heavenly, it was the next day. You could have informed him. <laughs> but Heavenly, like I said, it's like do as I say, not as I do type of uh, format she got running over there in her house. So, but anyway, we leave that situation. We go to um, Quad. Um, they giving her all her gifts and whatnot. She gives a, get her, they give her a crown that was somehow made of, I don't know what that crown looked like. It's something like a two or three year old made. But they gave it to her with her little scepter and she was queen for the night. And they gave her, without the heavenly, and went and purchased her a vibrator. I don't know where she got that, that mess from. But I was like, really, Dr. Heavenly? Really? Okay, moving on. We go to the scene where the guys are at the uh, strip club and the women are doing that pole thing. And it's kind of lackluster because I've seen, you know, some women, black women especially, they do a lot more than what they were doing. But it just seemed like these women were just shaking their behinds and wanting to get naked. And it was uh, one one dancer that was uh, 
pulling all her putting all her little assets on um dr damon and he was like "Ooh," like he was trying to hold up his hand like uh ooh, I, no don't don't do that don't do that but ooh, i like that but ooh, ooh, don't do that y'all see i got my hands up the man ain't touching and she touching me but I, I ain't touching her you know like dave i mean um damon put your hands down and enjoy that just as long as you don't try to take her in the back room and do the you know the nasty with okay even though she propositioned damien you know she tried to whisper but they caught it on camera because the camera crew gave us the captions she asked the man did she want sex he was like uh, mm, he had to think about that for a few seconds <laughs> that's i hope dr evelyn don't see this footage because he should have been straight out when she said that he should say hell no nah, uh-uh and get off me and whatever but uh-uh he was letting them titties fly all over his body because she had ripped off everything i like lord and that's just too aggressive that's just too much that's porn right there 101 that's prostitution right there lock her up law find a law and lock her up but you know when you're over there in mexico i guess everything goes but uh yeah damon was enjoying himself and they was enjoying themselves watching damon squirrel over there uh, then we got uh, everything has transpired into the next morning honey you would have thought the men would have said whatever happened in that strip club stayed at that strip club but honey Aiden was over there confessing to Mariah you had Eugene in the bed confessing to um, Toya then you had um, Dr. Hevelin interrogating Damien where he couldn't do nothing but <laughs> He couldn't do that but uh confess eventually to his wife because she was giving him the second third fourth fifth sixth seventh degree honey and then she's gonna call herself get man and walking out on him and i'm like then she calling women hoes and bitches and all that I'm like heaven and some of them folk were probably trying to make money make ends meet why are you doing that to them now some of them could have been that way but not all them women was hoes and bitches i mean come on heaven clean up your act and clean up your mouth child but anyway yeah, that's what had happened. She got mad. And, you know, she walked out on Damien. But I'm like, girl, she wasn't going too far. She wasn't going too far at all. And, of course, the only G that was out there, which you would have expected him to be that way as well, was Curtis. Curtis like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what happened. So he got the G code down. You don't you don't read out your friends. You don't read out yourself. <laughs> Kind of wonder how he got caught with that lady in Savannah, Georgia, when him and his wife, Dr. Jackie, were having problems since he was, like, flowing like that. How did the hell did you get caught, Curtis, okay? But it just is what it is. That was my review, my retake on Merit to Medicine that aired tonight. The episode was uh, 12 for season 7, Revenge of the Sip and Paint. Okay, Carbo, St. Lucas, Mexico style. <laughs> Ole. Okay, but y'all take care, y'all. Um, have a nice evening. And if y'all get to see this video in the morning time or in the afternoon or even at night, thank you for coming to my channel, supporting me. Continue to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will definitely see you, God willing, next video. Good night, guys. Bye. Yeah.